Yeah, I think that, I mean, the answer, the quick answer is that most likely we can. It's just that we haven't fully developed uh, our, our choices. We know that currently we have not too many choices available. Integrative assessment models doing the, the climate modeling and socioeconomic pathways. They use um, bioenergy with carbon caption storage. They require humongous amounts of it. And that's perhaps where the problem and the bad publicity of negative emissions comes from. It doesn't have to be that we settled into the future with just one or two of these types of technologies. We could have a, a large portfolio that could, some of them involve you know, ocean, ocean components that can involve basically no much land requirement if they're more technological industrial base, you know, chemical reactions uh, type of uh, um, mitigation options. So I think that th there is prospect, it's part of the research and development that we need to do and to kind of enlarge that portfolio, which eventually needs to feed into the modeling that we do to kind of diversify the, the potential impact of any large scale deployment of mitigation options. I believe we can, we have to do it carefully. Uh, it has to be based on good science. But, for example, in, in the case of BECS, Bioenergy and, and CCS, how does it sort of adversely, potentially adversely interact with, with other aspects of the environment or our, our ecosystem? And, and uh, an obvious one would be if we start, start growing energy crops in areas where we should be growing food. So we end up with people having lots of energy, no food. Like. Um, that's a very clear one. So we've got to look at that sort of thing. We've got to make sure that we don't use water for, uh, for growing energy crops at, at the expense of growing food crops. So there's a number of things like that. And also, of course, the natural environment can suffer uh, just as well as uh, food stocks. So that's the starting point. And yes, with, with care, we can do that. Once it comes to storing that CO2, once you've captured it and stored it, well, in the, in the case of geological storage, we actually have an advantage with storing in a closed system. How do we know it's closed? Well, we know it's closed because it's been closed for millions of years. So we're putting fluid in there, and we're confident that fluid will stay down there. So I think the impact of, of, uh, of CCS, the CCS part of BEX, is absolutely minimal uh, in terms of the natural environment. So that's a very positive feature of CCS. I believe we cannot achieve negative emissions without side effects at all. There will always be some kind of negative side effects and the question is really to what extent. And I, I do believe we can achieve large scale negative emissions um, and th it's really a challenge to limit these negative side effects and I think one way we can do that is by diversifying our portfolio and not going at one technology only but trying to, to use a range of different technologies and then try and limit each technology in such a way that we also limit the negative side effects. So that's, that's I think, the, probably the, the most sustainable way. And I think really the question is not can we do it without negative side effects because everything has negative side effects. And also not doing these negative emissions will also have negative side effects because then we will either face much steeper emission reductions, which is much more costly and also has uh, also has negative side effects, or we will face um, well higher climate change, which obviously has negative side effects. So it's more a matter of balancing these these side effects. Well, I'm afraid not. I think is what I'd have to say in short. But I don't think that the side effects will all be negative. I think we can achieve large-scale negative emissions while having some really positive side effects, especially for agriculture, soils, water um, systems. Um, it's going to be more anthropogenic. I mean, the world's heading in that direction, but I don't think that's necessarily uh, a bad thing, that we can regenerate, restore, you know, enhance ecosystems, uh, that that'll be better for both nature and, and humans. But uh, we will make a few mistakes, but we are certainly making some big mistakes now, so we need to try to, to get ahead uh, and learn as we go. So I don't think we're going to drop trillions into the first... Uh, technology straight away but we do need to drop uh, a, a few billion here and there and, and get on with it because uh, not doing something is the biggest risk um, and we have the potential to do a lot of positive side effects or co-benefits. Rather than 
side effects, I'd like to first talk about impacts and pos positive or negative. Now, if the question is, can we uh, achieve negative emission, yeah, zero emissions neg um, without impacts uh, on the human or the natural world, then obviously the question is going to be no. I mean, in, in, in the conference, we've, we've talked about what kinds of things need to change, what, what technologies need to be developed. Um, this, is going to have, uh, yeah, this is going to have social e economic impacts. And we've also heard about the various effects that, um, that uh, the, the various NETS technologies will have um, in terms of their contribution to climate change and on other environmental systems. So it's not a question of whether um, whether we, you know, whether there's going to be changes, but it's whether these changes are positive or negative. Now, um, I'm not going to. It's very difficult to make predictions about uh, technologies which uh, are yet at uh, still at a very very early stage of development. So I'm afraid I can't answer that question right now. Um, what I would what I would say is that it's in, that it's uh, very important to be f fully aware of positive and negative effects. Uh, we, we can call those the side effects, if you like, of these technologies. Um, but also, to, um, but to consider these as well, as, uh, but to consider also positive benefits, such as which is often called co-benefits. Um, if we can get a, an overall assessment of these, um, we, um, then we should have a, a better answer of whether uh, the implementation of any particular NETS technology is desirable or not.